much with very other Yeah, I'm not ready. Camera's ready, lights ready, sound ready. This is the only thing I gotta make sure you time. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to another episode of Community Conversations. Today's guest is, lo and behold, Battle Mountains, Midway Market, Mark Lake. Hi. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Great. Good. We're going to get started. All right. So, what's your first question? <laughs> he's already ready. <laughs> well, I don't know if I am or not. You know, he doesn't know if he's ready or not. Well, I'm, I so. I'm getting, I'm, I'm all right. How was your day? It's been great. How was your week? My week was good. How are you ready for this week? Uh, yeah. All right. I always look forward to a new week. All right. So, well, let's start off with this question. Tell us about yourself. How long you been in Battle Mountain? So and so forth. Okay. Who you are? Who I am? Well, I am Mark Lake. I'm the father of five children, my wife and I. My wife is Janie. Um, we have been in Battle Mountain forever, really. I was uh, I came to Battle Mountain in April of 1959, and I was born in July of 1958. And my wife is a transplant from Burley, Idaho, and she was here when she was just a little baby, two or three years old. Her dad was working in construction as they were building Interstate 80. And then um, her older sister stayed here and met her husband here. And, and, and then my wife came back and her brother came back and would visit in the summertime and, and eventually ended up here in Battle Mountain. Mm. And so we've been here, we've raised five children here. Our oldest is 31 years old and our youngest is, is 13. So I'm a, a lifelong resident of, of Battle Mountain. All right, so you've seen it grow. I have seen it grow, and I have seen it shrink. I've seen a lot of things in, in the times that I've been here. I think one of my earliest memories of Battle Mountain was the flood. Um, I can remember, I, what I can remember from the flood is right next door to this, this is the house I grew up in. This is, this is my parents' home. You grew up in this I house? I grew up in this home, yeah. This Since house. you were a little baby? Since I was a little baby. <laughs> Yeah, in, the, in this chat, in this couch too. Uh, no, this couch is too. <laughs> <laughs> and the house has changed a bit over the years. I think originally, uh, well, it's just it's been remodeled. This was two rooms, I believe, to start with. I don't remember that. 
I don't remember this being two rooms. Um, there was in the other room out there, mm -hmm. you can't see on camera, there was a bedroom in there. And there were four, anyway, it's just been remodeled and work. But this is the house I grew up in. Wow. And it's built out of railroad ties. And I believe, I don't have proof, but I believe that the ties that this house are built out of are the ties that were taken up from the Nevada Central Railroad when mm -hmm. it was decommissioned in 1948. This house was built in 1950. So the timeline fits. Mm. But that's that's what I think. The guy that built it was worked for the railroad, so he would have had he worked for uh, Western Pacific, um, so he would have had access to use railroad ties. But mm. I think I think those old ties from the Nevada Central were free for the getting, and, and mm. then they pulled them up. Anyway, this is a big house. I don't know if you guys can see it. Obviously not, but uh, we don't want to reveal too much privacy reasons. But um, yeah. Um, we know that you work at Midway and, you know, it's all this community, this small community. I'm not personally from a small community, but I I don't know. It's, it's different. I kind of like it because you get to not just, you get to meet people um, and see them around on a regular basis, whereas a city yeah. or a bigger place, you, you know, you see them, boom, never see them again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And I think, you know, I think most of us probably know throughout the country, and anyway, you probably know two or three hundred people pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so in a, in a small community like Battle Mountain, you know that, that, that two or three hundred people, but that's a fairly light, large percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. Where in a city, you may have that same, but you, you know hardly anyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that has its advantages and, and disadvantages, right? Because mm -hmm. here, everyone knows everyone's business. <laughs> and for better or for worse. Right, right. But some of the things, from, I, like I said, my earliest memory was the flood. And I remember seeing in the house that's right next to us, there was a boat that were taking the people out of that house. But right across the street from us, going towards uh, Maverick, mm -hmm. there was no water. So the flood ended right here. So I'm kind of like, where did this flood in Battle Mountain come where did it from? Come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a it was a cold, um, wet winter. It got really it snowed a lot, kind of like it did here. Maybe the first year you were here, mm -hmm. um, it, it really snowed a lot and it got really cold. And then in February, um, what I think we we refer to today as the Pineapple Express, the jet stream that comes over from Hawaii brought in a bunch of rain. And it got warm all of a sudden, and it dumped inches and inches of rain on top of all of the ice that was all over Mount Lewis and and further all the mountains. further south mm -hmm. to, down towards Austin where a lot of snowpack was, and all that rain the ground was frozen because it had been really cold like twenty below zero for days and days and days or weeks even, and the ground was frozen solid down deep, and so all this rain comes in warm weather, you know, in the forties and and melted all the snowpack. Mm -hmm. But it couldn't go anywhere, mm -hmm. so it it started down the Reese River, and it's actually the Reese River that flooded Battle Mountain, and that's the dike that's on the the east end of town mm -hmm. is a protection from that happening again, mm -hmm. um, at least in a fifty year floodplain, and they keep trying to improve that and raise that dike because it's not complete. But when the water got to the railroad tracks, it backed up and it just started backing up from the railroad tracks, and downtown was was pretty much underwater. Um, where, where where's downtown? Downtown is is where Owl Club. Yeah, the Owl Club. Okay. And that business district. That was the business district back then, and and this was pretty much the edge of town. This house. Mm -hmm. There was a trailer park across the street from us, mm -hmm. and beyond that, the building that sits just to the south of mm -hmm. the Civic Center was the very last building in town. Mm -hmm. And where the hospital sits today was the high school. Mm -hmm. It's called Lander number two, or old lander number two. Mm -hmm. That was the high school. Um, at the time of the flood, the present um, fourth and fifth grade wing of the elementary school mm -hmm. hadn't been built. Mm -hmm. um, the, ele the elementary school was where the old abandoned courthouse is now. Over there? Over there, yeah. Whoa. So what's going on with that courthouse? I don't know. Why'd they shut it down? Because they built a new one. Why'd they build a new one? <laughs> because I think they needed a bigger facility. Uh -huh. They wanted a bigger facility. We, the county had a, a big 
um, windfall of money from the net proceeds of mines, mm-hmm. and they needed it. They needed a new courthouse, and and it's debated today whether it needed to be that big. Um, but it is a facility that will last Battle Mountain for a long time. Mm-hmm. And the school district came into about uh, $23 million, too, and embarked on the largest building project that the school district had ever done. And that was all paid for in cash. There was, well, with the exception, I think, um, they borrowed a million and a half dollars on a medium term. You're pretty informed yeah. about the things. Well, I was, I was on the school board at the time. The school board? There's yeah. a school board? How many boards are there here? In Battle Mountain? Yeah. Well, there's the county commissioners. Uh-huh. And then there is um, chamber of commerce. The chamber of commerce, but that's not that's a not really a governmental right. agency. Mm-hmm. Um, elected boards. There's there's the county commission, the hospital board, mm-hmm. the school board. I think those are the three elected um, positions. There there is a TV district. I don't know that those are elected positions. TV no. district here. There what? Yeah. There was originally. Well, there, there, is, there, is, there still is. I don't know if they have any people on them, but there is a. Gen, it's called the Argenta Improvement District Number no. One, mm-hmm. and it was set up as a, a taxation authority to be able to collect money um, to provide TV service to Battle Mountain before satellite communication. Are they doing that still? They. I mean, you. Well, I think so. the district still exists, and they uh, maintain some of the. FM translators that are here, I believe. And we had a TV station at one time. I don't know that it's on TV or, anymore. What's going on? Why is it? And that's why we're starting this show, is we're hoping that we can, you know what I mean, revive that or, you know, initiate that. And make that, and that would be a good thing. I don't know if, the, like I said, I don't know if the TV station is still on the air. I don't have cable TV, but I think what happened to it was the advent of, of um, cable, t- well, Internet. Satellite TV and internet, oh. and people just abandon it. But for but they use the newspapers. Well, to <laughs> some extent, newspapers are, are a dying breed even here. Yeah, compared to where it was thirty years ago, the newspaper mm-hmm. isn't too much anymore. So, is the town? Because you've been here all your life. So, right. do you think the town is trying to grow? Do you think they're trying to not grow? What's your opinion on that? But Battle Mountain, Battle Mountain is always in a boom and bust cycle. It seems like it's it's the economy is dependent upon the mines. Mm-hmm. If the mines do well and they employ a lot of people, then the town does well. Mm-hmm. And when the mines don't do well, mm-hmm. then then people move away because they are the largest mm-hmm. employer. Mm-hmm. I, mean, for, I think first off is mining, and mm-hmm. then probably um, the second largest employer would be the school district. Mm-hmm. And that's dependent upon population. Mm-hmm. And then the third largest employer is probably the county mm-hmm. in total with, with the hospital and the, mm-hmm. and the courthouse and the people that work there. And then probably the BLM is probably the fourth. And then you get down into the service industries, mm-hmm. you know, gas stations mm-hmm. and grocery well, what, stores. And, what, what do you think would help to take that weight off the mines? Not that it's terrible thing, but just to kind of like help out our community. To, do, to diversify the community, the economy, to grow it. I do, you know, I don't know what would help because we're kind of in a, in a situation, some kind of industry would help, mm-hmm. you know, if that, that could be, and there's been, um, there's mm-hmm. been efforts over the years to bring in industries. They, they at one point, the airport authority, uh, Tried to bring in some industry because we have that we have a, a huge airport out there, mm-hmm. and that would be something that that if they could get some kind of industry that was in here was dependent upon the airport, maybe aircraft maintenance or, mm-hmm. or something like that. But but then it's it's a catch twenty two. You get you have you may have the, the ability to create the facility, mm-hmm. but you don't have the population base for the skilled labor. So it, it's tough. You know, Battle Mountain's a What's the, the Chamber of Commerce have as their uh, their caption? Are you tough enough to live here? <laughs> it's it, it's difficult. We're isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a road going north. We've got we've got good access to, to the interstate east and west, mm-hmm. and we've got access to the south. But there's no there's no northbound road. You have to go to Winnemucca or Elko. Mm-hmm. So it's I think it's difficult when you look at things that would bring stability, like warehousing. Or, 
some kind of manufacturing or something like that? I, I don't know what the answer is. Service industries, I mean, we all would love to see a movie theater, mm -hmm. um, a bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Both of those things existed in the past, and they both, the, the population just didn't die at that, that, that time. Yeah. And some of that space maybe on, on, on boom and bust. I mean, at one time, Battle Mountain was, was maybe half again as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. And as the mines changed their, their mining plans, mm -hmm. um, the population shrunk. And I think it, it's continuing to shrink somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, I know the school district's population is, continues to decline. We were, at one point, I think we had 1,500 students in the district and we're down only 1,000 now. Oh my God. And it decreases a few every year. And this is, you think this is all coming because of the mines? Well, yeah, uh, for the most part, because that is the, the biggest employer in some of us. Wow. And, and the people that are here too, well, when you, when you talk about some of the challenges that face Battle Mountain, people at the mines work about six months out of the year, mm -hmm. and they have those long changes, and everybody's from somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So on those days off, they like to get out of town. Mm -hmm. We're such a mobile society, not just Battle Mountain, but everybody is such a mobile society now, you know Nobody thinks too much of getting in the car and, and driving to Reno. So I'm, what it sounds like to me is just, you know, circulation of money. Like, you know, first thing, I mean, the mines make a lot of money. That's why people are here. Right. But they take their money. And they, well, as soon as they are off, they dip out. It, they, yeah. And it doesn't, they, give the, it doesn't give the community a chance to grow, right? That's part of it. That's, that's part of it. And there are other opportunities that are that are that are available for them to do outside of Battle Mountain, um, entertainment wise. I think I think that one thing that we really have here to do that is really, really good are our youth sports programs. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have kids that are that are that fall within the ages of five to fourteen, mm -hmm. um, then you, you're not even most people aren't even aware of. I mean, there's there's mm -hmm. little league baseball, mm -hmm. little league softball, mm -hmm. um, little league football, mm -hmm. soccer, um, and all of them have a hundred or 150 kids participating in it, mm -hmm. and they're all volunteer organizations, and mm -hmm. and you know the parents run that. One of the things that all of those organizations run into mm -hmm. is getting enough volunteers to run it. Mm -hmm. I, we're unfortunately. We're living in an age where people have forgotten what it means to volunteer, I think. Mm -hmm. And they'd rather, they, they look at a lot of those youth programs as a place to drop off their kids and let them babysit. Mm -hmm. Parents are, seem to be distracted and don't want to mm -hmm. help out mm -hmm. to do that. They want something provided for their kids. And I think that's a great opportunity for people in Battle Mountain to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wish that more people would. I, I, they're always, always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing for somebody who doesn't have kids, you know, who are just, they either don't have kids yet or their kids are mm -hmm. growing up and they're empty nesters. And there's some great opportunities there. And, and you get closer to your to your fellow neighbors, your fellow man, if you mm -hmm. take those opportunities to volunteer. And I wish more, more of us would do that. Mm -hmm. It's a huge need here. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that that we were talking about that have changed since I was here. When I was little, you know, I talked about the flood. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when they paved the streets, it was 1964. We had dirt streets before 1964. The, the only road that was paved was Highway 40 that runs to this mm -hmm. front street. Mm -hmm. And that was the main thoroughfare. There was no there was no freeway back then. Mm -hmm. So every car that went east to west came through Battle Mountain on Front Street. Mm -hmm. you know, there were a lot of service stations down there that don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this road that's in front of my house, in Broad Street, that went to Austin. Mm -hmm. Those were the only two paved streets. So the streets were paved. Um, the B Town car wash was built. I remember that being built. Mm -hmm. um, the new hospital. I remember, I can slightly remember the old building that was there for the high school. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the first class of students that went to the Mary S. Black School. Um, that is where the district administration office is now in mm -hmm. elementary school, um, kindergarten through third grade. I went to uh, mm -hmm. the Eliza Pierce School that was taken down to build the new elementary school. Mm -hmm. But I think you guys, it was brand new when you guys moved here, right? 
Elementary school? Yeah. 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 Um, I was here when the high school was built. When I went to high school, and I think you already said this, that was where the fourth and fifth grade room of the elementary school is now. That was our high school, built in 1964. My class, I think, when I graduated in 1976, I had mm-hmm. like 36 graduating students. Mm-hmm. It was the largest mm-hmm. class to date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back then, right? we've had classes of We've had classes of over 100 students, and I think they're back down into the 60s and 70s now. So, those are booms and busts, but I don't know if it just does that. So, I think mm-hmm. we just have to uh, sounds we like have to make the best of what we have. Yeah. yeah, and that's what it sounds It sounds like, you know, the minds are the ones who decide whether they are, know or not. If it's the price, yeah, the price is as a commodity as now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a commodity. Supply and demand, demand, right? Supply and demand. And, and, uh, it's not so much what I've seen. Part of what I've seen as well is, uh, you know, is who's willing to do the work, who's willing to show up, exactly. who's willing to you know start, who's willing to start it, you know, and that's what we're hoping to accomplish too. You know, we know, you know, part of the burden that came upon me was this is your town, Jeremy. Like God telling me, this is your town. You live in it. You know. Um, Take ownership of it. You know, I think more people have to hear that. You're absolutely right. And it's like, and it's kind of like the burden, you know, you brush your teeth, the burdens that you have, you take care of your family. But then the burden of like, you look around and you see like, you know, nice houses, beat up places, the, the drama, and, and that becomes a part of you. And you're like, you care about it. And you're like, no, this is our world. This is our community. We need to, um, what's that word? Be prideful about it. Like, yeah. Have some pride in it. Take community yeah. pride, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where it starts because it's just, it's those very same people who started coming here and mining and digging for gold that started that, those uh, Barrick and Newmont, you know, it's people like me and you yeah. that started. Um, I'm going to go out in the middle of the desert and I'm going to look for some oil. I'm going to go out and go find some gold, you know what I mean? And, I, and even just doing this, it's like, you know, get up go and do something serve your community go out and uh, try to figure out uh, not just com- constantly complaining but you you yourself even when no one else is moving you get up and you make a better world for your kids yeah i mean yeah you can see i mean everybody it's easy to see the problems mm-hmm. it's kind of hard the hard part comes when you want to take it if you're going to take action because like you say everybody can complain mm-hmm. that's the easy part mm-hmm. you, have to take, you have to take ownership right you know, right just simple, make it work simple things too yeah. yeah um if you know one of the verses that that comes to mind is you know because i'm studying to be a pastor right and one of the verses in scripture says if you can't take care of your own house um how could you ever take care of the house of the lord you know and i look at my yard and i'm like that's my yard like if i can't appreciate the small things how what who would entrust me with the greater things yeah yeah so do you want to finish off with with any ideas or thoughts or you know i don't think so i ramble too much no you're good you're good good. that's like that's what i would do i would just i just think that we need to we need to have a change of heart really everybody in battle mountain Mm -hmm. and like we've, we've talked about, the opportunities are here. You know, just they're, take advantage of it. Just anywhere. Yeah. The world the world doesn't change until we change, until exactly. our hearts change. We are the ones that, we are the, we are the agents of, of change. We are the ones mm. that can affect that change. And if mm. we don't, no one will. Right. You know, if we want to make Battle Mountain a better place, with the, 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 the whatever has provided. I mean, the mines provided the money that built every new thing that's here in town. Wow. The, the rec center, the new schools, the courthouse. The, so the, the mines are the mines are, are are trying to keep people well, here. They they are trying, and it's not the mines directly. They right. pay a net proceeds. Mm-hmm. Our founding fathers, that not the nations, but the, mm-hmm. the state's yeah. founding fathers, mm-hmm. were very wise in setting up the way they set up the tax structure and the net proceeds of mines. And that would come back to the communities because the communities are where the impact of the mines are. Mm-hmm. So those net proceeds mines that are that can be windfalls for the mines are doing well. Mm-hmm. And and I think Lander County has done very well in mm-hmm. spending that money. Mm-hmm. 
our infrastructure things, and that's where all of our, I mean, all of our new improvements. It didn't cost the taxpayers in our community a dime to build any of those facilities. Mm -hmm. It was all paid for. Unlike the high school that was built, and the high school before that, and Mary S. Black, and the Vice Paris, mm -hmm. and those were all built on, on bonds, or on money that was borrowed. So, so, so we've got that to be, so those things have been, those things have been provided for us. Now it's up to us mm -hmm. to, to make good use of them. So, so I guess the moral of the story is things are a lot more complicated than what they appear to be on the surface. Yes. Right. All right. Thanks for tuning in. This was great. We're definitely going to have this guy on the show again. All right. God bless. <laughs>